Hello, library folk. I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to talk to you about a new project launched here in Krios. The core motivation for this project is the growing evidence that scholarly communications have biases and that the practices of science pose barriers to inclusion. At Krios and in the libraries broadly, we've argued that more openness and inclusion in scholarship are needed, that effective change requires systematic research, and that steady progress will require reliable measurement over time. In line with these thoughts, the goal of this specific project is to produce standardized indicators that describe who contributes to open science and scholarly outputs. Currently, measuring progress towards openness, equity, and inclusion in this space is challenging. Most of our measurements come through one-shot publications and the analyses in them, like the one depicted on the left. While these publications are useful, the analyses are difficult to compare because the sources they use vary across publications, they compute different statistics, and they often aim to describe different parts of the system at different times. Furthermore, published results often lag years behind the data, so our understanding of the environment also lags. In response to these gaps, our project seeks to inform three core questions. The first is, what is the prevalence of members from different groups in open scholarship and open science initiatives and their outputs? Building on this, where are these outputs used and how does this use depend on who contributes to them? Finally, can we look at these patterns of use and output and see how they vary across different disciplines and different parts of the scholarly ecosystem? IMLS has given us a runway, three years to produce data, the indicators themselves, to produce reports on trends and the like, to develop some community requested indicators focusing on community priorities, and to publish on this more broadly on the process, what we've learned in remaining gaps. We're taking a principled approach that focuses on comparability, comparing measures over time across different methods and ways of measuring the same concept. And with other measuring efforts, like the ones conducted by the Center of Open Science and the National Center for Science and Engineering Statistics. To achieve comparability, we're designing indicators to focus on regularity, especially across time, honest accuracy. Nothing is perfect, but we can measure, control, and report our uncertainty, and reproducibility so that the indicators and the reports can be rerun, extended, verified, preserved. In phase one, we've identified eight existing data sources that together will be cleaned, integrated, and analyzed to create the initial set of indicators. These include researcher information from ORCID, information on different forms of scholarly outputs, policy information from RORMAP, article usage and contributorship, citations, editorial board listing. For reproducibility and comparability, we focused on data that are available under an open license, cover a broad range of disciplines and which are being regularly updated. Together, this set of sources, while it's not complete, will provide a large sample of open access and open science outputs and participants. And that allows us to measure signals of contributorship, impact, and policy effect. To fix ideas and to cap this presentation, I'd like to show you an early result from the project. The figure shown summarizes the diversity of editorial boards grouped by different sorts of journal policies, open access versus closed access, open science policies versus no such policies. This figure was created by integrating DOIJ, open editors, and CUS data. Using this, we were able to analyze the composition of thousands of editorial board members from both open and closed journals across a range of fields. Zooming in, we could see surprisingly that open access journals as a whole 
have a somewhat worse gender balance than closed journals. And there's a similar pattern with respect to journals using open science practices. This suggests that we need to design interventions specific to each of the goals we wish to achieve. Openness doesn't do it all. On the CREAS website, you'll find a lot more about the design of the project and the findings so far, along with upcoming events. Take a look, and when you have comments and questions, please reach out and let us know.